are y'all ready to be firefighters? Apparently. <laughs> Guess so. Yeah. And when I told you that I wanted to run you guys through Attack of the Swarm, and I'm pretty sure two, I sold the, it to all of you. That's like, like village people super arc. epic, right? Do we get to be all the village people <laughs> in book two? Uh, yeah. One can only hope, dude. To some degree, yes. Fingers crossed. Um, I think you might have uncovered the true secret of this book, Griffin. Um, oh, damn. Uh, I'll yeah, take, uh, I'll take my inspiration in the mail. <laughs> you know, I really, I really think I buried the lead in the pitch when, when I brought Attack of the Swarm to y'all, because um, this is really where it's at. You know, this is this is where the real good shit happens. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. So it seems <laughs> everybody prepared for bugs pivot into fire. Yeah. Uh, you know, city management, you know. City management. <laughs> Little did you know, it's about to be Sim City. I was going to say, this is Town Tycoon over here, or some shit. Sim Finder. <laughs> um, okay, well, you guys handled the water collection facility swimmingly, as I knew you would, other than, you know, allowing the bomb to explode. That wasn't great. Um, but. You did kind of figure out that there is some sabotage going on here, that there is some something afoot. Um, and before you could really collect yourselves too much, you got this call in about a fire down the street. So then you're going to be firefighters. But we can't go fight a fire without each of us having a cold beverage in our hand on the way. So, Griff? It's the only way to put out fires. It's drink beforehand. Yeah, drink beforehand. Uh, let's start with Emily this time. Emily, what are you drinking? Okay, so last session I had my my son Fox, and it was disappointing. But this session, I'm taking a page out of Griffin's book. This is an Elysian Punkachino coffee pumpkin ale. Look at that nifty. Isn't that cool? Festive. It's festive. I'm festive. just curious where the connection was drawn. A coffee. Is, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Didn't you I have see coffee? Like, yeah, I, I generally drink Punkachinos, too. Uh, <laughs> that's come up on the Griff's show a, a lot of times. It's a real Punkachino kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah. guy. It's, it's, <laughs> y'all, it's really good, though. I like it a lot. Also, it's like a very large bottle so i feel well speaking of very large bottle hey it's me griff that's that <laughs> the connection you're trying to make i get it mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and i'm drinking a campfire amplifier by dogfish it's a uh pretty generic stout but <sighs> speaking of uh pretty generic hey steve Oof. hi griff this is your most average player here um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. My name is Steve. I uh, play on the Hideous Laughter podcast. I'm a Toon Bay and Saw on that show. Um, and tonight I am drinking a hazed juice. This is a hazy IPA from Brickstone Brewing in the suburbs of Chicago. Let's give that a try. Mm. Juicy as the name suggests. That's Speaking what she of, said. Speaking of juicy. Hey, hey what you drinking? Hey, baby. Uh, I'm still on that bush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pay Speaking tomorrow. Of that's bush. That's good. Me all. <laughs> hey, buddy. What you drinking? I'm, I'm drinking a truly mango lemonade. Have fun with that one. Speaking of someone I truly want to make lemonade. All over the place. Hey, Adam, what are you there drinking? He, is. he did it. He did it. Uh, well, did continuing, the tr- continuing the trend of pouring what I got on the shelves, I have um, a little bit of amaretto over ice with some orange bitters. So. <laughs> Baby, we got to get you to the grocery store. <laughs> Found some sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> got a bit of pine cone. Got uh, and dash. there's a little sap I mean, in here. Look, amaretto <laughs> is a classy aperitif. All right, <laughs> go great with my sap. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it really I makes the bark go down. You know, Pepto Bismol on the rim. Yeah. 
sets it off. <laughs> sets it off. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, really the thickens level. the beverage. <laughs> mm. Got some new Nutella in here. <laughs> uh, Goodness if you, gracious. <laughs> if you have enough cinnamon, it'll make you high, so I put, put, poured all that in there. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It's going to have to be a short session tonight, guys. I'm drinking a rum and NyQuil. <laughs> uh, well, Support the plan. Here we are. We'll see how it goes. You arrive at the scene of this inferno. The streets around the burning five-story apartment building have been hastily cleared of civilians and most vehicles. Dozens of civilians crowd the roads to the west and north of the northwest corner of the block behind official barricades to which you is the direction that you approach from. Many of them are recording the incident with data pads and comm units. You see a trio of New Graca militia members standing on the closer side of the barricades looking helplessly at the blaze. Uh, the two soldiers, you see a female and male human and a Sheeran. And when they see you, they look thrilled because they're like, oh, hey, yeah, over here, because they're desperate for somebody to do something because they clearly look too young to have any experience. Like these are fresh recruits here. Uh, and so they look very relieved to see you and immediately kind of announce you as in charge look the uh, the sdf is here they've uh, they, they've come to help help us what should we do <laughs> look look it's a tiny cowboy a dragon lady a nurse and whatever you are <laughs> a pirate and a prison guard Thank you very much. <laughs> we that's are right, that's right. The war heroes are on the scene. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> stay <laughs> calm. Everyone step, step aside. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they sent the suicide squad. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, man, I should recast myself as John Cena then. Oh, God. <laughs> They're like, uh, we, look, we just we just got here. Uh, we heard shouts for help. There's, some, there's some, somebody in the building, um, but we don't know how many people are inside. But there's at least three, and I, I think one of them's a child. You gotta do something. Um, it's pretty clear. Everybody roll perception real quick. No. Can do. Oh, yeah. Oh, put it on the board. Natural 20. There it is. Oh, shit. There it is. Mel is pretty good with a natural can't, 18. Can't get away from that two off the dice tonight, guys. Oh, oh, need to die. Hey, well, you're not alone. That's oh, a 27 20. for Sig. 22 right. 14. for Vin. All right. So, uh, Vin and Sig, you can both, you know, you're focused immediately. And you see that it looks as if the first two floors of the building are completely engulfed. Um, with the third through fifth not yet quite on fire. But the, the first two floors seem to be pretty covered in flames. Um, can I roll like a physical science and kind of scan it to see how hot uh, it, the the fire is, or like how structurally sound the body? Yeah, I was, uh, I was hoping we could get a structural integrity <laughs> check. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll take an engineering or physical science, whichever one y'all would like to roll. No, I mean no I can do both of them, those. dude. I'm, I'm so, so pick I wanna, one. I want to yell at the building and I can, intimidate it. Engineering I can't do physical science. I'm going to stealth no. past the fire. <laughs> stealth past. All right. How about I roll the physical science and you roll the engineering, Emily? Okay. Oh, crap. Oh, 17 on the die. Uh, I-, I can do this. 24. Rolled a 17 total. 17 total? Yeah. What did you get total? He's- Life science, 17 total, and then a 24. Physical science, 17. Excuse me, sorry, yeah. 24 in the engineering. Uh, Okay, so with that, you can can get a sense that the fire is moving fast and that you have, if you have any hopes to get in there to the third, fourth, or fifth floor, you know, you're going to have to move fast. Now, you do have the life bubble, and I mean, you can attempt to 
go through the first and second floor upstairs and stuff i mean or whatever anything else you come up with but you don't have a lot of time to come up with a plan like basically i got you on a timer here so Life bubble squad, roll out. Oi, Sig, you just run in there, you get them, and throw them out the window, and I'll catch them. What's the, are there any windows, <laughs> and what are the heights? What's so the height? it's five stories, right? So okay. the general story is... Um, 10, feet. 15, yeah, 10 feet tall. Uh, 15. 10 feet. But it's, it's, I mean, it's covered in smoke, right? So, like, smoke is coming out of mo- most of the windows, definitely on the third floor, most of the fir- fourth floor, and some of the fifth floor. Um, I mean, there are windows, yeah, it's an apartment building, you know. Are any open that we can see, like, on the third or fourth floor? Yeah, I mean, yes, some of them have blown out, some of them are open, some of them still closed. All right, so... Yavari can't really do anything through the second floors, the first and second floor, because, you know, fire. Um, But she will fly up to the third floor and try and enter through a window. Let's all roll initiative. Oh, okay. All right. We're going to fight this apartment building. Yeah. (laughs) Pretty much. God damn it. Guess what? I don't even have to change from last time. Well, maybe you do, because you're within 30 feet of... I'm next to Tex. I'm next to Tex. So, Tex, what did you get? What did you you get, Heath? Hold on, sorry. I had to reload my fucking hero lab. Uh, I have an 18 again. Yay! Oh, dang. What's your modifier? Uh, 0.03. All right. I am a... I think I'm a 0.03 as well. I, I got an 18, too. That's all I was saying. Okay. 15 for Vin. All right. 11 Natasi. for your girl, right. Natasi. Oh, wow. All right. So all of you got 18, so you guys can basically decide who goes first here amongst the three of you, because I think you all have point zero threes. Yavari will be last. Okay. Um, Is your plan I- to run in, Sigurd? I got two options. If if you're saying there's a window open, I do have jump jets. I could feasibly get up there, I think, mm. through an open mm-hmm. window. But I'm not going to be able to, because it's jump jets and not a jet pack, I'm not going to be able to fly up and bust the window. I'm going to need right. something that's open. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do have the, I do have the, the life bubble. I am pretty hardy. I think going in, you know, I can withstand the smoke and stuff because of the life bubble. I think if anyone's going to sweep the first two floors, it should be me. Because okay. that's the most likely to have, like, rubble and shit that we're going to have to bust through. So either right. me and some other life bubble people or just me is going through the bottom floors. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go in, but, I mean, I, I was going to go in with you. Let me guys, right. you, you guys are, are closer here, so you don't have to use your first turn to, like, move to the building, right? So... Basically, your movement would start once you walk through the door. That's when, like, round one starts. Okay, perfect. So, uh, we do have all this lighting on. I'm seeing a couple things that I'm not sure if are doorways. Uh, so, so the little, like, gaps in, in darkness you see are windows? Windows. Okay, perfect. Um, Am I in front right of the front door? in front of door? you there is the door, yes. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to bust in this door and I, then I, uh, I need you to roll a reflex save absolutely That's actually a, I need everybody to roll a reflex save as, as Sigurd opens the door this backdraft just burst out in a 15 foot cone uh, what did you get Sigurd? it's a 21 21 you like set us up to take damage from this thing, bro. Yeah, look at look at how we're playing. I'm just saying, you're like, oh, middle, you need to make it closer to the entrance here. So you don't I mean, have you to certainly do don't have to use your first move action. Look you how the coach is trying to I gladly would have taken a move fair. action. That was not intentional. So, like, I do kind of feel like that's shifty, and was, but it was not my intent. Um, 
But you're going to take the damage anyway. Natural 19, scrub. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> well, I got a natural 20. I oh, rolled on the board. Ooh, board. I rolled real bad on the damage, if that makes y'all feel any better. This was 5d6 fire damage. Oh, my God. But I rolled a Set one, us up a, for one that. a two, mm-hmm. a three, and a six. So total is 13 points of damage six. for anybody that rolled less than a 15. If you rolled Absolutely. over a 15, you only take... Six, Six points of damage. Yeah. Okay. Still, dude, eating did, my did stamina. Did anyone up. fail it? Mm-mm. Yeah, six. Damage. I did not fail. No. Okay. Cool. All right. Doors open though. Sig. Um, All right. Then with Sig's second action, he's gonna he's gonna start moving through. I mean, it's it's hot as shit in here. I'm sure. Um, it is. So so the situation here is that every square on this floor is on fire Mm -hmm. and so they're subject to extreme heat which you're protected against with the life bubble it's also filled with thick smoke reducing visibility to 10 feet okay and imposing the usual effects for smoke however i think the life bubble also protects you against that yeah it's going to be an inhaled fortitude it doesn't provide the ability to see in conditions of poor visibility no i'm talking about just the 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 inhalation inhalation. perfects from yeah right right um how, if you end your turn on a square that is on fire, you will have to roll a save against catching on fire. Okay. Are all, right. all the squares that are on fire marked on the map? No, not on this. Just on the first, because it's basically the same floor plan for all five floors. Okay. Uh-huh. And so you can consider that the first two floors are every square on the floor plan is on fire on the first two floors. Okay. It, you know, but then you have to make your way up from there. Okay. So from there, Sigurd, you have your full movement. Okay. Perfect. So, and you see the stairs directly to your left right here. I mean, do I have to roll a check or am I intelligent enough to know if something doesn't have like a life bubble, it's like fucking dead on this floor? There, there's no way anything is al- is alive on here. Like you're you are literally running through full on running flames. through full flames. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna one, two, three, so five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five. I'm gonna get here. I assume it's still fire. Mm-hmm. So is that a that any sort of save or is it just a static damage? It's it's if you end your turn, so you could move. You know, you could downgrade a standard action to another move. Oh, oh! I assume me busting the door open was me. No, so as my... I said, like basically, initiative starts when that door's open. Gotcha. So you know? yeah, that's my first move, and then my second move, I'd continue upstairs. Does that get me to like a similar? So yeah, that would spit you out right here. And then you could continue to loop around. 10, 15, 20, 25. So I'd still be on the stairs. uh, And now I think I would, uh, if the second floor is the same as the first, I'd take whatever fire damage. So you roll a reflex save to avoid getting the burning condition. Okay. Uh, So that is a 17. Okay. So you're, you're, you're good. Okay. You, You have not caught on fire. And Sigurd is in the stairwell, heading up the second floor of two completely engulfed floors of this apartment building. Um, Tex, you're up. So, quick question. Mm -hmm. As Tex kind of starts charging in, Yavari would be like, Tex, do you you want me to just fly you up? I mean, can you? Is my extra weight going to reduce your ability to fly? It hasn't before. So that's, I mean, it would make you encumbered to carry him. Yeah, okay. you might be better off letting him run. Yeah. Because yeah. Okay. at least he's not going to take any smoke inhalation stuff. The worst thing he has yeah. to worry about is catching on fire, which, you know, fucking stop, drop, and roll when you hit the third floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, my whole plan initially, I was, I, I wanted to, like, just follow Sig, like, hold on to his fucking belt. All right, well, you, you know can do that. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely do that. 
I mean, you're right behind him in turn order, so... Yeah, it's just you you have 30 feet move speed, so if you can get further than me, you should. You could basically get 10 feet further. Okay. You could get onto the hall of the third floor, basically. Um, okay. which, Which would also prevent you from having to roll the reflex save because at the you get to the third floor and it is not on fire yet now there's smoke kind of seeping through the floors right it's hot right but it is not on fire yet um when you get to the third floor you can roll a perception check for me well i was gonna say as i like turn to run in right after sigurd i like mentally uh, send a message to Yavari and I'm like if I die in here tell everybody I died a fucking hero and <laughs> charge in um, and roll a perception you said yeah. mm-hmm. okay that is a 17 17 yeah the it, you hear some cries so you know that there's something on this floor, but you can't really make out which direction it's coming from. The roar of the fire and the and kind of your own breathing in the life bubble makes it difficult to pinpoint what direction the cries are coming for. And that will be your turn, because it was a double movement there. And Yavari, you're up. Um, so Yavari does not have life bubble, so she's just going to woof, woof, woof up to the third floor uh, to a window mm-hmm. that's open. So you tell me where that is. Uh, you can go to either this window or this window. And it'll take your oh. full movement to get up to the window and then it would take more movement to step into the building because it's 30 feet okay. up. You know. Alright. Yeah, she'll go into this one. Alright. And so then your second movement puts you in there and you can roll a perception. Uh, it's not great at all with the 13. The 13. Well, 13 is good enough because you are in the room that the Yasoki are in. You can't see them because of the smoke here. Like It's like that dense, but you feel maybe 15 feet below you. It's, it's like looks like south on the map, but it's actually east because north is oriented to the right. Um, you hear this the the cries of a young Yusoki and a mother. However, you can see just barely the vague outline of a Yusoki on the bed, but not moving. On this bed, the on, in the, mm-hmm. the one I'm in the room with. Mm-hmm. But that's going to be your whole turn at this point. Okay. All right. All right, Vin. I'm sorry. Free action. Can Yavari like scream out like I found some? Yeah. Like just yeah. trying to get people to pinpoint her. Yeah, that'll give a bonus to perception checks. I like it. Okay, Vin. Vin shouts up to Yavari. All right, and throw him out the window, and I'll catch him. And Vin will stand by. He's not going in there. Him. Fuck that. You should throw a mattress out the window. Uh, have okay. two stamina left. Are you kidding me? Fuck that. All right, so you're just holding yeah. right there. All right, Natasi. All right. So, um, okay. I, I, I want to do one of two things, Adam. Either I want to follow the boys in and just kind of run up the stairs like normal, or preferably I'd like to run up to... Um, to 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 the side of the building under where I saw an open window and then jump jet up. Now, um, I could definitely jump jet up to the second floor because I can move and jump up to a height of ten feet. So if they're ten stories or ten foot stories, I could get to um, the second floor, or I can fly straight up. 20 feet so if I got like directly under something 
and then jumped straight up, would I be able to like grab the edge or something? Yeah, we'll we'll do a roll to see if you can grab that edge. All right, so what would that roll be? Because I'm not going to do it if it's something I'm bad at. Because I'm bad at a lot of stuff. I'll let you choose between acrobatics or athletics. All right, she runs in the building. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Damn, I should have taken that option. Plus eight acrobatics. All right, so what's your total movement speed here? Um, I can move twice, 30 feet a pop. All right, so, so I'm just going to put that'll put you basically 10, right 15. here in front of Sigurd. So uh, that, however, will still require a reflex save to avoid catching fire. All right, eighteen. Eighteen, you're good. And then roll a perception check with a plus four. Ooh, okay. From Yavari's scream. Wonderful. I think I might have needed that. Um, That is going to go up to a 21. 21 is good enough for you to know that Yavari screamed to you from the west side of the building, which would be over here on the map. Mm -hmm. That this is the general area. Okay, and I'm sorry, point of clarification, are we about, are Sigurd and Natasi about to come up on the second floor or come up on the third floor? On the third floor. Okay, so she's right behind Sigurd. Um, You're right behind Tex, really. Sigurd's behind you. So Tex is out on the hallway of the third floor. I see, I see. And then you're right behind. With Fog of War, I think I can only see Sigurd. Anyway, okay, so Sigurd's right right behind me. She's going to uh, tap Tex on the back. There's somebody in there. I think I heard Ivari scream out. Round two. Sigurd, you're up. Uh, I feel like we have enough people on this floor to take care of these people. And we don't know that it's only three people in this building. That's all they could say, but again, that's all. That's all. I think you've already saw. I don't know if you yelled out three people or what you yelled out, but I think with that in mind, Sig's gonna Sig's gonna run up to the fourth floor. Okay. So Sig uh, let's see that. And I guess make a perception check on the fourth floor. And as he like exits the staircase onto the fourth floor, he's also gonna yell out like, "If anybody's alive, fucking yell! It's hard to see." All right, roll a perception check. Oh baby, that is a twenty-five. A twenty-five. It's pretty good. In fact, it's good enough for you to hear not voices coming from the fourth floor, but from above you on the fifth floor. It's very faint, but that 25 is good enough to get you that little extra awareness that somebody responds to you, but it's like muffled as it's coming kind of from above you through the floor well, or the fuck. ceiling. Then can Sig continue his movement? He has 10 more feet of movement. Mm-hmm. So he's just going to start heading up to the fifth floor. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could get there in another move, right? He used he used one. F- so when he entered the landing of the um, of the fourth floor, because he still had some of the second floor to get up, that cost him forty feet, and then uh, that's five ten. He only has twenty five foot move speed because of his armor. Gotcha. So yeah. that's his full fifty. All right, but you were well on your way to the fifth floor and certainly not in danger of being caught on fire um, as you're continuing to move up. Tex, what are you going to do now? You're on the third floor. Natasi tapped you on the shoulder and kind of gave you indication of where she's at. Tex, or uh, Sigurd just blasted by you and said, I'm going to the fifth or to the floors up. So we're we're on the third floor. That's the same floor that Yavari's on and the same floor that the first set of Yosokis are on? Yeah, so what you can see is you're in the hallway and that, that I mean, with 10 feet you can barely see a door to your right in the hallway and you don't see any doors to the left and then it just is kind of in smoke for the for the rest of the hallway. And I, But I do, Natasi is next to me? Natasi is, yeah, right behind you in the stairwell. Okay. Um... 
I have a, a mechanical question. With with your jump jets, could like if you got a hold of like these Yusokis, they're not very heavy. Like, can you jump out a window and like use your jump jets to like de decelerate your fall? Um, I don't know if you can or not. From um, this height, assuming third floor, you'd have to start a movement in that window. You'd right. have to be unencumbered by their weight, and then you could, as long as you're going surface to surface, you can move 30 feet, whether that's straight down or whatever. It gives you, like, it's like, in quotes, a fly speed, and the fly speed it, for jump jets... It doesn't it, matter what direction. It, well, yeah, but it has to be that you, you land on a land. solid surface at both ends. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so, I mean, he, he turns to Natasi and he's like, let's, uh, let's get through this door, and if we can find, if, if there's children in there, maybe they won't weigh much, and you can jump jets them down. And he will go towards the door. Try to go through this door. All right. Where, I, I can see the hallway now. Where's the door? Right here? Okay. Yeah, so he moves up, up to the door. Yeah, it's, yeah, right there. So, yeah, it, but then it's a move action to open the door, right? Yeah, I mean, I open the door and, and immediately, like, si uh, like call out for Yuvari. Like, Yuvari, you in here? I mean, you hear Yuvari. Okay, okay. Cool. I, well, Yuvari, I'm saying she hears you ask, uh, ask that question. Yeah, she just like, Tex, found him! <laughs> <laughs> it is your turn, Yuvari. Um, so she would first go and check on the one in the the bed, like is it is it alive? Yeah, so you can roll me uh well just yeah, clearly unconscious. Um Okay. And you see kind of soot marks around his mouth and his whiskers are a little singed. Okay. Um he looks you know, he's he's yeah. unconscious. Do I see the other two? Now, yeah, as you move closer, they, you can see the mother holding the child on the other side of the bed, like kind of huddled on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, Yavari would be like, come on, come get closer to the window so we can get you out. Um, and she would go ahead and pick up the unconscious body. And how big is that? Like, what would that be considered? It says here that it's eight bulk. Eight bulk? Yeah. For a it's a Yosoki. So it says he weighs 80 pounds, eight bulk. That's insane. Um, okay. She grunts because this fucking kid is a chonk. Um, I, I, ju I just Googled it. It does say a Yosoki are 60 to 100 pounds. God, that's damn, insane. That's they got, yeah, they got that. Get that yourself to butt. 30 to 40 pound weight loss plan that the rest of the small races have. <laughs> oh my god. Um, okay. Uh, shit. Okay. So, mechanically, how does this work? Like, I mean, I'm just going to try and jump out the window and use my wings to yeah, but, slow uh, so, the fall. So, you are probably beyond encumbered. You're. Yeah, you're going to be massively encumbered. What's the next <sighs> stage? Uh, 21 is overburdened. Yeah, I'm so. I'm currently at nine, so oh, nine plus okay. eight. Okay, over. You'd be under overburdened then. You're just yeah. You'd just, yeah. You'd just be encumbered. just be encumbered. All right. So encumbered reduces your movement speed by ten feet. You take a minus five penalty to strength and dexterity based checks. Um, and then you and you have jump jets. Hey, or you um, have a fly speed. Yeah, I have a fly speed. Yeah, so that fly speed would re be reduced to twenty feet. What so you you'd take? fall the She's last. She's still 10 gonna feet. do it. She's just gonna fall the last last few. You know. Right, that's how that would work, right? Because it would take their first movement to get to the window, which she can do that. What are you going to do about the mother and child? I, I have a plan. She knows she knows that Tex and Yeah, but they're looking at out. you like you, this giant dragon kid just came in and scooped Dad off the bed and is about to walk out the window and take off with him. you got to say something to him, you know what I mean? Okay, like, she said, my, my team are coming. Tex! Tex! I got you! They're going to get you guys out. And He's she unconscious. Just, she just looks at you wide-eyed and scared, but you do your thing. You grab, you grab, you know, you don't have any time to, to fuss with yeah. this. You grab the the dad, Yusoki, in your arms. You step to the 
to the edge of the window and kind of look at it like, oh God. And, and you jump out and then I need you to take two points of bludgeoning damage as you kind of fall the last 10 feet. Okay. But you are able to get one citizen out of the fire. And so that and will be your turn, right? And you're at the you bottom. Yeah, she, lo- she lands and she'll look up at Vin and be like, can you help him? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Vin will run over there and be like, oh, yeah, let me take a look. And um, Vin actually has some medicine, so... All right, I mean, well, a medicine check? I'm not... Well, med- I think treat deadly wounds, maybe? Yeah, but that takes too long, right? I mean, you could start working on it. It takes like a minute, I think, right? But that will be what you're occupied doing for the next... Well, look, rounds. I'll tell you something right now, my man. Vin's not going in that fucking burnt pill. That's just, just not happening. So. You'll be occupied for ten rounds if you do a... a, a well, can I just wins. can I just check? I mean, you don't need to do a medicine check. You would you can tell he's unconscious. Okay, he's well then dying, Vin's just gonna chill, but, dude. All right, <laughs> right. Natasi. Tex, it sounded like Sigurd kept moving up. Do you need my help now? I think I got this. I think I got these two. All right, Adam. There's a fuck ton of fog of war and shit. Can you take me sixty feet further? You're going up. Yeah. I mean, so you just book it up there. Because, like, you don't see him anywhere on the fourth floor, Mm -hmm. you know, and you can kind of, I mean, this is all happening in six seconds, so you can hear him that he's continued up the stairwell to the fifth floor. Uh, Round three, Sigurd, we're we're back to you. Sigurd continues to the landing of the fifth floor, um, and at this point calls out because he heard somebody up here. If you're up here, respond. You gotta respond. I need to figure out where you're at. Um, and you hear some shouts coming from the apartment to your left. So that would be the western apartment. Um, and it's not smoky up. It's not as smoky up here. So you have thirty feet of vision. Okay. Um, so you can't see the door to the left-hand apartment from where you're standing but you know it's not the one to the right. Okay. So he's going to continue down the hallway. He used 15 feet, so... And I assume the door... He can now see where the door is up to the left, about 10 feet in front of him? Yeah, that's correct. And it's the far, far door to to that apartment. All right. Is that was that your full movement? Yeah, I mean, I, I had to move on to the fifth floor. All right, All right Tex. Okay, Tex is going to come into the room to where he can see the Yusoki. Well, the problem Yusoki. is, is you get here and this door is closed. Oh, God damn it, Adam. Okay, I go and I open the door. We'll see you next turn. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, dude. That's <laughs> how it works. Maybe try a stretch uh, where you open less doors. Yavari. Um, okay, so quick question. Mm-hmm. How c- just dropping our, um, weapons is like a free action? Mm-hmm. So Yavari's like One huffing that you're and puffing. Holding. Oh, fuck. Okay. So to draw it and drop it would yeah, be... Yeah, that would be a move action. Uh, fine. She just keep them on because it doesn't really matter, anyways. Um, she feels like she'd look over at Vin and see he's not really doing anything, and just kind of was like, <laughs> and would fluff her wings and head back up. Uh, she can only ma- she can only make it to the third floor. Yeah, though. So you're gonna go back to the same room. Yep. All right. And that's it. <laughs> okay, Vin, you're doing okay there. Just chill, he says yep, to the Vin do, Vin's doing good. Yeah, he's just like, all right, just just hang hey, there steady, mate. And yeah, just don't go he'll, anywhere. He'll look over at the at the city guards and, all right, mates. Yeah, they'll come over and start like trying to like they'll pull out like a little like flip pad, like 
okay, yeah, we studied this. This is CPR. Okay, we got to do this, this, you know. And you see them doing it. Okay, it's the... <laughs> Another one bites the dust. If we just do it to stay in alive. If we just do the beat to stay in alive. That's what they told us in class, you know. Um, <laughs> so they're trying to give uh, CPR <laughs> to, to this unconscious Yusoki. Uh, Natasi, you're up. All right, I'm going to... She's going to keep moving, baby. All right, so I'll put you in the hallway, and that takes... 20 feet of movement to get here. Okay, cool. So then um, she's going to move straight down the hallway. She's got If she's going to double move, which is definitely what I'm going to do, i got 40 feet of movement left. So she's going to come barreling down this hallway. Five, uh, five, ten. So she gets just past Sig, uh, almost to that door where that screaming came from. Um, but uh, but that's, that's all I got. I'm, I just moved this turn. Okay. It is round four. Uh, then I need to roll a perception check. Okay. Uh, that's a natty 17 plus 4, 21. All right. You're just kind of looking around, keeping your eye on the block, and you see from the corner, the far corner, stepping around. The corner is a new Grokken security robot working its way onto the scene. Um, right right there about, what is that, about 50 feet away? Something like that. Um, 57. 57, yeah. Well, I mean... And yeah. so, like, this, this robot is all blue, and mm-hmm. its right arm has, like, human-like fingers... I mean, it's not flesh, but they just, it looks yeah, like a yeah, human yeah, hand. Yeah, it's like, yeah, articulated. Uh, yeah, and then on the left arm, he, it's like an integrated plasma cannon for the left arm. All right? And then its head is like an old-timey police siren. That's all it is. It's just like a big red siren, uh, you know, flashing light. Just whoo, whoo, And so it's like making its way onto the scene. Let me go ahead and roll uh, initiative for this guy. Uh, Sigurd, it's your turn. All right. Sig moves to be in front of the door um, and busts it open. What's he see? Uh, let me show you what you see. So as you bust this door open, you see like a a common room Do I have kind to of like thing or like a living room. Scoop myself a little. Oh, there we go. Sorry. There you go. Uh, yeah, you see like the living room. There's a couch that's facing a TV. There's uh, a little kitchenette. In here, in fact, in here on the fifth floor in this apartment, you see what looks to be like two young humans. Um, one is crouched on the couch, and you don't see a second one, but you hear a second one further in the apartment. All right. He turns back to Natasi quick because this is the end of his turn. Hey, Toots, you got jump jets? Sure do. You got that, jump that's jets? That's all I had to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's going to have to take one of these people, unless I'm just uh, grabbing both of them. <laughs> I mean, uh, the jump okay. jets don't work when they're encumbered, and if a rat folk weighs eight, uh, that will put me well over. The door slams shut behind you, Sigurd, and you hear this weird, <laughs> like, short sound. As the door closes behind you, Tex, you're well, up. Well, fuck! Oh, what is that shit? So Tex comes in the room with Yuvari and the uh, Yasokis. You said there's two. There's a mama and a kid, or a baby. Us, uh, like a toddler. Okay. All right. So he comes in the room, and he uh, did you, Yuvari or Emily? You you took damage from falling out last time, or you were good? Like two points. Oh, so you can just fly them both out. I mean, depending on what the... If I become So the toddler would be like an, another two bulk, right? And so that's ten more... Ten bulk total you'd be adding. Does that put you into overburdened? Nope. That so would yeah, just put she me could. at 19, so... Okay, well, get, get, you get them the fuck out of here. <laughs> and uh, I can get me out of here. Pretty much. Okay. 
So as, as you guys are kind of like having that conversation, maybe a little bit more articulate as the characters, but nonetheless, you see her look like terrified and like shake her head. No, like she's kind of paralyzed by fear. She doesn't really seem like she wants to leave or that she's too scared to move type of deal. The mama? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to turn to the mama and be like, uh, and I'm going to cast Charm Person. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to tell her, look, you got to trust us. We're firefighters, all right? We're here to get you out of here. We are professionals, and we're going to do our job. <laughs> all right, you have her charmed. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, basically she'll move with you on your turn. Or she'll do what, you she'll, know. She'll move, she needs to move with Yavari. Yavari, yeah. right. Right. Uh, so basically, you give her the command to move towards Yavari, so Yavari can just scoop her up. Right. Um, which she does at the end of your turn. Yavari, it's your turn. So she she moves towards you, kind of a little dazed, a little dazzled look in her eye as she looking at Tex, kind of smiling now. And then she moves towards you, and you know you could easily grapple. We don't even need to roll the dice on that. You have her scooped up. Excuse me, Mrs. Mouse. <laughs> Just like picks her up. And yeah, I'll jump out again. Her and the kid. Like she's right. holding the kid and I'm holding her. All right. So I'm going to ask for a reflex save just because you're juggling a lot here. Okay. You know? Okay. <sighs> Don't drop the kid, Emily. That's a six total. Oh, no. I rolled a four. Vin, I need you to roll a reflex save. As you see Yavari come, like, out of the building, and she catches her claw as she jumps out and spirals her down because she can't really quite get her grip. As she's, like, kind of spiraling down, and the baby slips free from the mother's arms. All right, no. I'm going to use an inspiration. <laughs> on this. Don't, don't make this darker than it has to be. Oh, my God. I don't want to do it, so I'm really hoping that Zach passes this. Natural 17. Okay. Plus 7. <laughs> so 24. Okay. 24 is enough to catch the baby Yusoki, the toddler Yusoki. Yep. Um, Yavari, you're going to take... Some bludgeoning damage. Okay. As you fall on your back, take three points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. The mother's fine. And the security guards just kind of look at <laughs> look at Vin like with reverence at this point. Like, oh my god, did you see that? He just caught that baby. And Vin's what? just like holding the baby, like, oh, you all right, that little guy? Yavari from the ground looks up and just like groan growls. And it's just like, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to count that as your turn, though. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Natasha. Quick question. Yeah. I'm sorry. Did Tex get like, are you staying in there? You're- well, he had to move in. I, I used he, my oh, whole sorry. turn. Yeah. 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 Okay. My bad. Charm. So, all right, Natasi, the door is shut. Gone through the door, door shut in front of me. What do I have to do to get it open? You have to roll an engineering check. Is engineering the only choice? Yes, it is. Well, then I can't open the door. Well, you could try to bash it open Uh, with your body. Yeah, I mean that's that's literally all I have. The uh, um, I I don't have anything in engineering. I can't even roll it. So we really just get a str- at all. We'll just go a strength check. Uh, you'll hear Navas- <laughs> uh, Natasi's body slam against the door. <laughs> but yeah, like can we hear each other through the door? Yes, yes. Also, we have comm units. BT. Oh, yeah, I guess but- you're right. You're right. Yeah. Um. Jesus, uh, fuck. I don't know. I don't. I don't want you to like waste a turn trying to get this thing open. But my strength is a plus zero. Um. So here's what I'll do. Natasi's gonna say, Sigurd. It looks like something is trying to cut us off. 
Um, and then delay my turn till after you. If you want to, if you want to prioritize getting these dudes out of here, you can. And then I'll react and figure something else out. Um, but that's gonna be last ditch effort because I, I, I'll have to like jump out the fucking window or something. I can't. There's no way I'm getting this door open unless I roll like a natural twenty or something. Probably. Yeah, I mean, if you say that, Sig's gonna respond. Doc, I think I have a plan, but I'm gonna need you on the ground. You're gonna need to be on the ground. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't have a clue what your plan is. That's fine, though. Um, Adam, I'm gonna ping somewhere on the map. It looks like a door that just opens out to the outside, but we're on the fifth floor of the building. Is that yeah, a window? Yeah. No. That's, that would be doors on the first floor. They don't exist on the fifth floor. Don't exist on the fifth floor. Oh, and also, floor. Sig saying that would be predicated on the fact that that is, in fact, a window directly diagonally up from him, right? It's got line of sight through it, so I assumed it was a window. This? Uh, right here. Yes, that is a window. Okay, perfect. Yes. Then nothing changes. Yeah. So, you, so yeah, Steve, there's no doors in the hallway or windows in the hallway. Were there windows in the fourth floor hallway? No. Okay, well, this is uh, unfortunate. You got it. Just run. <laughs> well, we're also under the impression that this place could collapse. It took me like four fucking rounds to get up here. It's um, true. Hmm. Hmm. I don't like it. Are you just you're trying to get down? You're trying to get to the ground. I'm trying to do anything, man. Uh, I can try and force this door open, but I don't think it's going to happen. What's up? Would I would I have heard their conversation over the comm units? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I I respond on the comms and say, "Hey, Doc, I don't mean to eavesdrop, but if you can get down to me, I can get us both out safe." Sounds like a good idea. Sorry, Sig. You're on your own. Hope your plan works. Uh, and then she's going to move 60 feet down. So I think I'm going to so need help again. you're on the fifth again. floor. Yes. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So that basically gets you in the stairwell in between the fifth and fourth floor. Yeah. You're basically on the landing of the... Yeah. Almost on the landing of the fourth floor. Yep. Okay. All right, this robot, this patrol robot moves in. It's got its siren going. You know, that's how sirens sound here. <laughs> uh, nice immersion. Um, and then it fires a shot at Vin. And the Nugrakan security new recruits or whatever are like, what? What the hell? Why is why is that shooting at us? That's a, I thought it was coming to help us. Uh, but nonetheless, the shot is coming your way, Vin, with a 25 to hit ESC. Who could yeah, have seen this hit, coming? Dude. Oh, no. <laughs> and that is going to be seven points of electric damage. I try to shield the child. Uh, you do, and you take all that damage. <laughs> You put yourself right in right right in front of the child. And okay. Fucking hell, man. Oh, rough. Okay. Round five. Sigurd, you're up. First thing Sig's gonna do. There's a person in this room that he can see, right? Mm -hmm. Get over to the window. And then he's gonna shout. Uh, my buddy, he, he's in the other room. He's trying to get out the window in the other room. Well, let me finish. And he, <laughs> I assume there's a door to the other room, right? Yeah. Hey, you in that there? Can all. you get in here? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm coming. I'm coming. And, uh, you know, he would spend his turn to move and open the door. So he's like in the basically in the doorway of his room at this uh, point and then or Sigurd, will be at the after your turn you know okay so Sigurd having yelled is going to use his standard action to try and bust out this window with his, with Betty is that a okay. attack roll or what do you need 
Uh, yeah, it's an attack roll. Okay. I don't know how we're going to rule the, uh, the Windows EAC, but he does channel some <laughs> entropy into this. Well, but. it's it's like a, a hardness check, right? Gotcha. It's a, I mean, it's an Addy 18, so it hits. Yeah. And then it's going to be... Well, fuck. I mean, if it's a window and we're doing a hardness check, I'm I'm going to roll... Well, I guess I've already done it. I was going to say, I would roll twice to make sure I bust through it because it's, like, impossible to miss. But either way, that's 10 points of bludgeoning damage to the window. All right. So, yeah, you, you do bust the window out. Okay, I bust the window out, and the door behind me is closed. I see this guy in the doorway. The other guy is... Could, is at the window. Is at you know, the window. He had the movement speed to move up to you. Um, and Sig's just like looking at these guys. Get over to me and I'll get you out. I'll get all of us out. You're going to want to hold on to me. And he's going to use his move action to start like getting this guy that's by the window like wrapped up Uh, and what he's doing is he's kind of fully intending on plummeting out of the fifth floor trying to with all of his training and with his shield and with his armor he's using a combination of this attracting shield to shield the people in front of him as he wraps them up and he's using a combination of his bodyguard training to roll himself in the fall so that he takes the brunt of the damage. Um, he's trying to wrap these guys up so he can fall out the window and so kind, of, kind of like, uh, I would call it like a, like when the, when, uh, when the people survived the fall, uh, from, from the, um, uh, what is it? Why can't I think of the waterfall right now? Uh, Niagara the, Falls. Yeah, from Niagara Falls, when people survive that in a barrel, he's trying to be that barrel around these people. Okay, so I like it. It's going to be tough to get like two college age students wrapped up, don't you think? Sig is six eight. Betty is okay. a full ass riot shield. I don't know, man. I mean, that's up to your interpretation, but I think I mean, I but you're trying like, to like fully wrap your arms around two grown human men. You know what I mean, like. I know you're six eight, but even Shaq couldn't. I feel like Shaq could do that. People. You keep he could Shaq wrap two people up. Shaq absolutely could I'm wrap his arms around me, two grown people. Look, me and Zach are a good example of like college age humans. Shaq you know what I'm saying? could dwarf a dude. He could <laughs> he like, could, like, like I feel like you're telling me I feel that, like it's that absolutely Shaq possible. Could hold each of you in each arm, jump backwards no. out of. Yes. Floor. All you yes. gotta do is bear it's, hug them. Bro, have you seen how big the Shaq are is, bro? It. The kids, yeah, the kids are, sandwiched are sandwiched between sandwiched together. Sig and the shield. I'm just trying to bear hug them and hold Betty yeah. with both my hands on one end of them as my body protects them from the other side. Betty is like, a full ass shield. Solid signs, shield. Adam. Solid signs. All right, like, got, like I, they're gonna they're gonna land on you. And you have the shield on top of them. Basically, basically I'm trying, to, protect, trying to, do? to protect both sides in case we in case we fall in one direction. I'm not shielding myself. I'm shielding the open side of them with like with the back side, would kill like any the back side of them. And yeah. then I'm like, I'm gonna take like a you know fall backwards out of the window. Hopefully, take the brunt of it. In yes, case we roll over, spine. I have Betty. All right, good. I have a whole round to think about this, how we're going to do this. Okay? Sounds good. Because <laughs> uh, it's going to take a round for the other one to get into place. Um, but I, 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 we're going to figure out how to do it. Tex, on your turn, just as you're about to move, the bathroom explodes with fire. Where's the bathroom? Right uh, this here. little little cubby looking right here? Yeah, that's the bathroom. And so all of a sudden, the, that whole like little outlet is just a lit a light with flames uh, okay so what do you do okay so i use my comm unit to call down to yavari and i say hey yavari i'm gonna need your help i need you to fly back up to this damn window all right and uh we we gonna get all of us out and i'm gonna say that 
and then I'm gonna hold my. I mean, I'll I'll move as far away from the the flames as I can to to over here, and I want to wait on uh, Natasi to get here. I'm coming, and baby. Do you want me to tell tell you my plan now or wait? So here here's here's what you've done. You've used a move action, and you're readying I, an I action. I don't have a I don't have a plan for this. Well, it's complicated. Right, it's, but like, it's, so are you? It's you're less right. wild than than uh, Griffin's plan, but it's still pretty wild. So what I'm saying is, you're readying an action for when Natasha gets in the room. For if if she gets in the room this turn, I'm gonna say yes. I am readying an action, but it, it's More again, right, it's well, complicated. Well, so, so you back away from the flames. Yeah, and I, I call it like I said. I called down to Yavari. I said I'm gonna need you to fly up here, uh, maybe on my signal. I don't know how long um, Natasi's gonna take to get here. So mm-hmm. the the whole plan is contingent on all three of us being in the room at the same time. Right. Right. So I I'm coming, send a baby. message to you. I send a message to Yavari. Tell her that, and I send a message to Natasi. It's like move your ass, get down here. Uh, the bathroom just exploded. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, Yavari, you're up. Uh, however, you, this robot has just unloaded on Vin, and you can see that the the security team was quite surprised by that. Um, so this doesn't seem to be normal for such a robot to do. What do you do? Is there a free... No, you just said it's not normal. Like, obviously something's wrong with this robot. Mm-hmm. Um, Yavari's, like, got, you know, Tex talking to her, but it, that's just... There's civilians down here. She's going to scream out to the the other little... What are these people called? Security yeah. little goobers that don't know what they're doing? Right. Security goobers. Security goobers. Um, she's gonna call out to them. Where are the civilians currently? Are they like all right They're around on the other you? Side of the uh, barricade. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Okay. Um, yeah, she will, you know, just call out and be like, <sighs> "I'll be there soon." Tex, keep the civilians safe. She'll say over her shoulder and will level her gun at the robot. Okay. All right. We're doing a full attack or a regular attack? Regular. Okay. Um, that's going to be a 17 to hit. 17 to hit this robot is a hit. Oh, sweet. Well, it's you're shooting with lasers, right? Yeah. Yep, that is a hit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Piss, piss, piss. Minimum damage, four. Yeah, that is not great. Okay, but, you know, you do shoot it and hit it for four damage. And she's going to look at Vin and be like, I'll be back. (laughs) And she's going to use her movement to go up. Jump up in there. Yeah, to get back up there. All right, Vin, you're up. I mean, Vin is holding a child. Uh, He is going to turn. Free action, drop it. Definitely not. Okay. <laughs> I thought you said the civilians were behind the barricade. Not I thought the like ones, Mama. Oh, I thought you were talking about the ones that had crowded around no. us. No, no. I'm talking about the ones we rescued. No, they were right there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no. No, put me back down there. Well, I wouldn't I will, have gone what up. What I will say is that these security goobers are like right there to take the handoff <laughs> of the child, you know? So like basically a move action to hand off the child. It's a move action to, I mean, but that still puts me in in harm's way. Whereas Vin would be like trying to get the fuck out of there. Right, so but you Vin, have a child, huh? <laughs> Go ahead. What you gonna do? Uh, well, what he's not gonna do is stand there and take another hit from that thing, regardless, because it's a move action to get to the security goobers. The move action to hand him off, and then I'd take a free hit. So, Vin. Being the shitbag that he is, but he's not a monster, 
it's just gonna it's just gonna turn tail and run between the guards and around the corner of the building and be like, "Oi, get your butt under control!" Uh-huh. As he runs with the baby Yusoki around the corner out of the line of fire. Now, does this baby Yusoki encumber you? Two pounds? Definitely two, not, two dude. Bull? Okay, cool. All right, so you make the run around the corner, which is heroic in its weird way. At least getting the baby out of harm's way. Yeah. Uh, Natasi, you're up, and you can see the the orange hue of flames at the bottom of this these stairs. You know, the landing has also caught on fire to the third floor. Time to abandon ship. Uh, take me 60 feet as far as I can onto that third floor, buddy. I know I'm like at the fourth floor landing right now. Uh, I would like to get as close to Tex Arcana as I possibly can. That's, that's 5, 10, 15, 20. Pretty close. Pretty close. And so you did kind of leap through some f- some flames at the door to the third floor, but saw that most of the flames had consumed the room on the other side of the hall there. And so you kind of dip around, go around the flames, and end up in the room where Tex and Yavari are. But that yeah. is your whole move. She, she sees the two of them. I think it's time to leave. I got cut off from from uh, Mr. Sigurd upstairs. He was muttering something about barrels, though. I think he has a plan. <laughs> um, okay. It's this... You did have a ready to action, Heath. Okay, <clears throat> so... I just want to... I'm going to go ahead and lay out my plan for you. Just so there's no confusion here about what I'm trying to do, okay? So, I, at level one because I've used this in other games before and found it very useful, I bought Ion Tape and a Zip Stick, okay? And the text of Ion Tape is that I've got 50 feet of it, right? So, let me pull it up. All right, it's a ribbon of, of material round, wound around a spindle, um, fits in the palm of my hand, comes in a wide range of colors, that doesn't matter. Uh, it's got 50 feet. Uh, it's easy to cut through or tear, um, it's a weak adhesive that keeps tape in place uh, when wrapped around an object, whatever. But when it's exposed to an electrical charge of any power, like a zipstick, the tape uh, solidifies into a plastic-like material, gaining hardness 8 and 15 hit points. Uh, you can use it to bind creatures. Uh, that doesn't matter. Uh, you can use a second jolt to revert it to its tape-like state. But the most important fact is that um, normally it can hold five pounds of weight in its tape form. It can hold 300 pounds of weight in its plastic-like form. So what I want to do is make a fucking fireman's pole out of this window and have Yavari jump down with my tape and pull it down <clears throat> and I'll electrify it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rip two pieces off or, or a couple pieces off to make a hook so it hooks onto the ledge of the window and then you have a, a 30 foot fireman's pole and she can hold the base of it so it doesn't wiggle and we can slide down a fireman's pole to safety. It supports 300 pounds. Okay. I, I love it. We're going to say that your action this turn that you're, you know, you're ready to action basically is to give Yavar, you know, you, you lay out this plan now that right. Natasha's here and you give Yavari the tape so that right. on her turn she can jump down you know she knows what she has to do and then on your next turn you'll use your action to electrify it and hold it and slide yeah and, and then let, use your let, movement let, to slide let, down. I'll let Natasi slide down and then I'll slide down it and then I'll unelectrify it well Natasi actually has oh yeah it was her whole turn yeah so that's turn, that's yeah. what's gonna go around next round I li- love it Heath that's great thank um, you it is the security goober's turn. And they're like, uh, <laughs> and uh, Beva turns to her her partner. She's like, okay, this is this is what they trained us for. Line up. And so they line up, and they're all three going to pull out their little pistols, the little starter pistols, and shoot at this bot. First one misses with an eight. The sh- ah, the Sheeran hits with a 23 
for one point of damage, and the other one misses. They're just like, ah, covering fire, you know, like straight serial and that shit up. But uh, <laughs> nonetheless, they're they're determined to to fight this thing off, and it is the robot's turn. And it is going to fire upon these security goobers. Oh, no. Uh, it's going to full attack. Oh, oh, dear. Better them than me, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> to read I, I agree. All right. So that is a 23 to hit the first one. And a 27 to hit the second one. So that's going to hit both the... Beva and Car- the Sheeran and the female human are ge- are getting hit here. Oh man! Okay, Beva dies as the security robot blasts a hole right in her forehead. Beva, no! The Sheeran also dies, oh, and they shit. both just fall to the ground, smoldering wounds. And uh, the last one. Looks equally pissed as he does terrified. Yikes, guys. Two of the three security guards down. But I guess you bought a turn, Vin. So there's that. Round six, the fire begins to spread. Uh, So yeah, it spreads out. Uh, nobody's in it just yet, but Natasha is right up the edge of your heels there. Sigurd, it is your turn. Does this other dude run up to the window as well? Yes. All right, so here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to need you to roll an athletics check. Sure. That is a 24. DC was 20. But I set in my head. Low DC, just because I liked the plan. You're able to wrap your arms around these two and just throw yourself out the window. So Sigurd, Sigurd uses like all of this. He's he's kind of holding Betty from both sides with each of his hands so he can get around the two kids, and um, and he's kind of like mumbling to himself at this point. He's like he's starting to get some of his memories back he's starting to remember some things about his life and he's he's like Betty I think you would have been you would have been proud of me you gotta help me protect these kids and he kind of just leans back out the window and now he's utilizing his entropy to mitigate and he's using it in a weird way usually mitigate is to either reduce the damage that you take yourself or reduce your AC. He's reducing his own AC in order to protect these two kids. So he's making sure that he takes the direct force of this fall and he's also utilizing his aligning shield and his bodyguard to just take the brunt of this fall. He falls directly 50 feet to the ground with the two kids trying his best to keep them from taking any of the damage. All right, so here's how I'm going to rule this, Griffin. Because you are making so much effort to keep them from taking the damage, you're going to take 6d6 instead of 5d6. That's fine. But they will only take 1d6 damage instead of half the damage, right? Because, you know, essentially that's what you're trying to do is give them an auto save on their yep yep exactly. on their fall right and so instead so since you are taking all this damage i'm going to roll an extra damage die yep uh, that, that's for that i'm totally fine so he's purposely they auto have failing. six hit points each so all right i'll i'll make you oh, i'll wow. make you a separate wager <laughs> give me 10 d6 to let them both live I don't think he's going to do it. I mean... It might knock Sig right out. (laughs) 
Plus, you could get through my stamina for the first time this AP. All right. Let's uh, see. Oh, you taunted him. Successful Do taunt. <laughs> I used my Sigurd now. Intimidate. <laughs> mm. I don't know, man. I just, I like it, but I also don't like it. You know, like, I feel like they have to be at risk of taking some damage. You know, they have to. They're falling 50 feet, too, no matter what. You know? Uh, I get it, man. I mean, it's your ruling, but I just, I left the window open for you, just in case. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it with the 66. All right. So, Griffin, you're going to take 17 points of damage. 17 points of damage, which is not really a lot. Could have been way worse. First for Chad. Three damage. He's all right. Broke his leg, but he's all right. Come on, baby. What's the second one's name? Peyton. Peyton. Five points of damage. Oh, shit. Dude dude, uh, got knocked out cold, but uh, he's still alive. As Sigurd comes falling out of the building, back first, just, you know, holding Betty over his head with two college students between him. He just falls and, and like, cracks, you know, shatter out beneath him in the cement as he lands with all his force at terminal velocity on the ground. Uh, And he just goes, (coughs) yeah, gets the wind knocked out of him a little bit. (coughs) Still have three stamina. (coughs) Uh, but you are prone, of course. Of course, um, yes. Uh, all worth it. Amazing. That was really incredible. What I will do is give you an inspiration, and I will also give Tex an inspiration for his zip stick ion tape plan. Because uh, it's your turn, and it's time to execute that. So, like, really, I think the way that works is it basically takes all of yours all full turns for everybody to get out because it takes an action for Ivari to like hook it to the window and then her movement to go down takes an action from Tex to electrify it and then his movement to slide down and then it'll take two move actions for Natasi no it won't so Natasi you would have an action well, I would, I would have to turn. walk to it and then slide down. That's two, correct? Because I'm not right oh, next right. to it. So, so then Tex couldn't go down this turn either. Because okay. doesn't it, it, is it a standard action to electrify it? Uh, let me look real quick. I mean, I imagine it's like a yeah. You're like manipulating. It's, the it's basically here. like a it's like a pocket lighter, you know. But you're um, you're interacting, yeah, you're I guess, to use a two E parlance. Right. Oh no, <clears throat> I might have foiled the whole thing up. Uh, a zip stick is a small pin-like device used to administer a small jolt of electricity. This jolt is enough to deal one electricity damage with a successful melee attack as an improvised weapon. Yeah, so you just gotta hit hit it, right? And so, yeah, so but I'm not hitting like a person. It has yeah, it doesn't AC. matter. Like, it, basically, that's a standard action to okay. to activate it. So, like, yeah, you won't be able to because you'll have to move over to it to activate it. And then that's fine. I mean, I'll go last. Like, I want to get everybody out. All yeah. right. So you'll delay your turn till after Natasi. Then Yavari, you would hook it as an action and then the move to slide down. Right. Yep. All right. So you do that. And now it's Vin's turn. Okay. Um, I think Vin probably just keeps running, like like steering clear of um, of the, the, the building, you know? It's close to the other side of the street as he can. Okay. He's just, he's just running with this kid. He's trying to get the fuck out. I mean, looking for somebody he can hand this baby off to. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, 
nobody around at the moment. Yep. Okay. All right, Natasi, you're up. Uh, this fire is certainly creeping up on you. In fact, did we already go around? Yeah, so it is on you now. Yeah, she has no interest in sticking around uh, inside a burning building at this point with the exit. So uh, she's going to go ahead and um, walk over to the window, grab the grab the tape, and turn to Tex before she jumps out the window. I'm always impressed by your ingenuity, Mr. Arcana. And then she's going to uh, slide down, and uh, we kind of got Avari a little bit in the way, so can I just, like, eject behind her? Yeah. Okay. You can go right here in this square. Exactly. Perfect. Okay. That text kind of mumbles to himself, Oh, thank God I already did this one time on that Akaton job. (laughs) Fucking bank heist. Second floor. (laughs) All right, so you you move in to the window and then use an action to electrify the tape. Oh, oh shit! Then I couldn't have window. slid down with, if it's if it wasn't electrified. That's then. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so I, that's I would just I'm, delay my I, turn until after you well, go. Well, yeah. Either way, it works out. You guys do that to in such a way yeah. that basically, text you're left at the top. Because you don't have the movement to go down, but you firmed it up in, enough for Natasi to go down, and it's the security goober's turn. All right. All right, that is a hit for the security goober. Only one point of damage, though. And it is the robot's turn. And now seeing Yavari there will make a full attack on Yavari. All right. Yavari does a... 22 hits your EAC. Yes. Okay. And then does a... No. So just one hit there. Four. Five points of electric damage. Okay. All right. Round seven. Sigurd, you're up. You're prone. Had the wind knocked out of you, but alive. Yeah, Sig's prone on the ground, and the first thing he's thinking is these these two people he just helped out of the building. How are they doing? He sees one of them conscious, but, like, holding his leg, and the other one just, like, completely out cold so um, he move action draws um, draws a uh, health serum mark one and plunges it into the unconscious dude okay which heals him uh, three points of damage and that's his full turn all right, yeah, I mean, he he gets up, <laughs> wakes up, stands up, and kind of helps his buddy limp away from the burning building for their turn. They're kind of out of out of the mix right now. And I think Yvari, Sig, well, Sig, while he's on the ground, is going to comms unit, like, what's the status? Does everybody get out? Because he's, he's fallen out of the building, at least from my yeah, reckoning on the, on the map, side. the opposite side of everybody else. So yeah. I just got out. Is everybody okay? I'm the last one, and I'm about to slide down a fireman's pole. We good, baby. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure everybody else reports what's going on. <laughs> There's a fucking security Watch robot. Watch out for We're the killer good. robot, mate. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Roger. I mean, you Where can actually did... see Vin at this point, Sigurd, if you look. Okay, I see Vin oh, yeah, well, I can. I didn't even, Vin's going to come I around and just hand the high. baby to Sig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vin is literally in the corner of the map, like. So the zip stick tape situation is set. Yavari sees this fucking robot. Mm-hmm. She's going to non mechanically charge uh, into melee with it. Okay. And is just going to pull out her flare axe as she goes. All right. And. Put it on the board. Damn. 
That's a one. No. Oh. No. She's so tired. She's been flying up and down and carting Yasoki and rough. yeah, rough, just rough, rough. rough. Okay, Vin, yes, yeah, so you see Sigurd and you see the college students get up and run off kind of in your direction towards you. Are they clear of the building? Uh, well, they can only move 30 feet, so they're about right here, right at the corner of the building. So he's going to call to them, Oi, get clear of the building. It's coming down any second. And uh, it's just going to wait for them to come towards him. Okay. Natasi. All right. Um, health Vin check. Moves, or, yeah, Yavari moves out of the way, and you see this robot kind of aggressively moving in on you. What do you do? Uh, health check real here. Uh, Emily, Heath, how, how far are you guys into your stamina hit? Are you into your hit points yet? I am not into my hit points. I am one stamina away from being into my hit points. I, I have two stamina points left. He's okay. also 50 feet away from you. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm 30 feet up for sure. Oh, 30, yeah, yeah. that's right, 30. Uh, so I yeah. think I could have got him, but it's, there's could. no point. There's no point. Um, okay, let me do some quick counting if for movement. 5, 15, Okay, that should be good. Um, she's going to move 30 feet basically directly into the middle of the street here, um, just far enough where she can get, uh, get angle on this robot and try and take a shot at it. All right. These fucking twos. Oh my gosh! These fucking twos, man. All night long they've been they've been teasing me. Nah, it's, there's no way in hell it's a hit. No. Uh. Uh-uh. All right. Um, it's the security goober's turn, and that is going to miss. It's the robot's turn. Uh, so the robot is going to take a five foot step up. And slam into Yavari. And that is going to be a 22 to hit KAC. That hits. All right, that is going to do 13 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. All right. Round eight. Sigurd. Sigurd gets up and moves. He starts trucking. All right, so Tex. So move action one, to slide it's down. One move action to slide down. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I do that for sure. I get down here. And I don't, I, until this point, don't even know about the robot, right? Well, I think uh, Sigurd yeah. mentioned it over the con. Or no, uh, Vin. Blah. Vin. Vin and Yavari both mentioned it on the comms. Yeah, after you were like, everything's good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I mean, I don't, I can't shoot or anything. I don't have a way to. You don't have a gun? I, I, I mean, I've just assumed Yavari's in the fucking way. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you can't shoot. Um, but it would be, I can, so I can pull, as part of a move action, while I'm sliding down the pole, I can pull a gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do that. Uh, and I'm gonna, yeah, give it a, give it a shot. Okay, that is an 18 total. That's, uh, that's a hit. Is it? Yeah. Okay. That is five piercing damage. Okay, okay. Uh, now Yavari. Okay, let's see. Okay, all right, that's a little bit better. Six, uh, 23. 23. Yeah, did that right. 23 to hit. That's a hit. I hate my life. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be eight. Eight. Electric and fire. Oh, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. Okay. Then, what you got? Vin's going to delay his turn until Chad and Peyton approach him. Uh, okay, they approach you. Vin's like, Oi, 
hold this baby and and hand him the baby. Chad looks like terrified, but Peyton, like, but Peyton's like, all right, I'll do it. I'll do it. And he like scoops up the Yosoki. Right. Wait, so we got one with broken leg and one basically with brain damage? Yeah, or like a concussion, you know. And the concussed one is holding the baby. Yeah, correct. Okay. It's like, all right, good. And then he will take off running back around the side of the building and draw a uh, draw his pistol as he's running. All right. So that's two move actions. Indeed it is. Uh, making your way back towards the fight, though. Uh, Natasha, you're up. Natasi is going to move a little bit further down the street, uh, just continuing to try and get a good angle around the big old lizard in front of her. Um, that's Yavari I'm talking about, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And she's going to go ahead and take a shot with that azimuth laser pistol. See what I can do. Well, uh, it's higher. Um, that's going to be a 10 to hit. Nope. Imagine my surprise. Uh, yeah, the security guard's going to move up with you guys so he can get a clean shot. Does hit for two points of damage. Watch nice. out. Watch out. Uh, it's now the robot's turn, and it is going to just out of its neck these two little prongs come out and a jolting surge or arc rather comes out of its neck and I need Natasi the security goober Yavari and Tex to all roll reflex saves that's preposterous as this electric arc just makes its way through the crowd. 12. You take four points of damage. You take four points of damage. Uh, You said you got a nine, Yavari? Mm -hmm. I want to use for the first time ever uh, my uh, Witch Warper ability called Thwart Ability, and I want to grant her a new roll. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, no. All right. (laughs) It's on me, though. Yeah, you got to re-roll it. Do better than a nine. A 15. There you go. All right, Yay. so you only take two points of damage. What'd you roll oh, yeah. What'd you roll on your reflex? Oh, I was going to get there, but I just wanted to RP for a second. He sees <laughs> it happen and sees that she's his his sweet baby girl, Yuvari, is going to get hit by the brunt of this. And it's like, oh, hell no. Hylax, save her. <laughs> and this is the first time he's ever caught up to Hylax not weighed on, and he rolls his sword ability, and it works. So maybe that'll affect his belief. Now, when we get to me, uh, I'm going to put it on the board because I rolled a natural 20, my guy. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, so you only take two points of damage. They, Goober failed their reflex save and took four points of damage and is still alive, but barely. Barely. Uh... It's round nine. The entire third floor is on fire now. Good thing you guys aren't on it. Sigurd, you're up. Sigurd keeps trucking, baby. Mm -hmm. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Uh, As he's doing that, he does pull out a pistol um, because he saw Vin do so as he ran. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to use his second move, 5... 10, 15, 20, 25. You're going to gain an entropy point there, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, Tex, you're up. All right. <clears throat> Tex is going to use um, Puncture Veil. Uh, which is instantaneous. It's going to be 2d4 piercing damage. Normally it would grant bleeding damage. I assume this doesn't have bleeding damage. I just want to do the regular damage, so it's 2d4. All right. And that is uh, seven points of damage. I rolled pretty good. It is very good. All right. Yavari, you're up. All right. Yavari's going to swing again. This time, oof, oof, oof. Gonna go 
full action attack. Okay. All right. The first one is going to be a 14. I think that misses. That's a, that's a mess. Yeah. All right, this is a fun game, guys. This is good times. Yep, that's it. That's a three. Okay, Vin. All right, Vin runs right around the corner, stops, looks, you know, looks down the lane. I don't know if I got this shot. I mean, this is definitely some cover, but make make the attempt. I, to be fair, I am very short. Yvari is very tall, though. Yep, it's, he's got cover, so. I don't know if it's po- I don't even know if it's possible is the thing to hit. I have a plus six to hit. Is it even possible? You could roll a natural 20 always. Yeah, but I just don't trust my ability to do that. Okay, or you could just not try and definitely not hit. Okay, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Natural 18 All right, so for a 24. That will definitely hit, my friend. Let's Even get it. Even with the cover. Let's get it. So Vin rounds that corner, just aims right over Tex's head, and takes a shot. Okay. And that's going to be for four electric damage. All right. Putting some work on this on this guy here. Next up, we have Natasi. All right. Um, I think of Ari's into her hit points because he took some nasty blows. Um, security goober is definitely in serious trouble and uh, actually so am I because I never healed up after the last combat so um, Natasi is going to coalesce this red mist around her and it sucks in kind of like an implosion and then bursts out like an explosion um, as she channels some healing life oh boy okay Twenty-one points of healing. Nice, wow. dude. Of course, nice. that spills over. Very nice. In into stamina. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Tons. what's your range on that? Thirty feet. Finn, are you in range there, my dude? I don't think so. Um, also, I don't yeah. know if you're in the into your hit yet. If you're not, then it's not going to do. Anything. I am. Oh, I am. Are. I'm missing five hit points, but it's fine. I am not, so I get nothing. Shit. Uh, that does heal the goober. Yay. Back up to whopping six. All right. Natasi dropping a heal bomb. It's the goober's turn. It's going to fire. It is going to miss. Robot's turn. Full attack on Yavari. All right, I think that'll miss with a 16 against EAC, right? That's a miss? That is a miss. Okay, 16 against EAC is a miss. Second one is also a 16, so double miss there from the robot. Nice. Round 10, Sigurd, you're up. All right, Sig's going to move 5, 10, 15... 20, 25 to get a look, and he sees it. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 to be so next to Yavari. So close, but not quite. All right, Yavari, you're up. All right, we are just going to try a regular swing. Some good old I'm natural just swing here. Fucking garbage tonight. Okay. All right, 16 on the die. That should get it. Yeah, plus seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's going to be 10 electric and fire damage. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, Vin. All right, so after taking the shot, Vin sees that his sight line is blocked, so he runs up between Natasi and the goober and takes another Another shot. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that's going to get it because it's a 16. A 16 is going to miss. Okay. Natasi. All right. Having back cha- to you. 
having channeled some uh, some effective Wait, healing. I might have skipped Tex. Yeah, Tex like you skipped Tex. Yep. 18. Yep. Yep. Dope. Let's see. Can I run through the goobers? Yes. Square? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so Tex is going to run <laughs> his, his tiny little ass. He runs and weaves and, and jukes and bobs between Vin, Yavari, <laughs> and the goober to get on the other side of the goober and is going to take a shot with his pistol. All right. Just kind of slides in between there, lines up the shot. It's this troll class security robot that's on the Bro. fritz. Bro, you're going to have to install that camera soon because that's a natural 20. Oh, wow. All right. Um, fun fact, this thing is vulnerable to critical hits. So is you're going to roll your damage twice, and then it's going to take half as much damage on top of that. Okay. So that's Had I known pretty, that, I would have just juicy. crit more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you I can, crit I would have put crit zeros crit. behind all those twos I rolled. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's an option, right? Okay. All right. So I got four on the first roll, four on the second roll, eight damage. Plus another so four. So then another four. four. So 12 damage, 12 piercing damage. And the f- robot has fallen. Hell yeah, son. Uh, yeah, you guys can go ahead and finish your drinks, and we'll see you as you've put yeah. out the fire and stop whatever was going on with this crazy-ass robot. We haven't put the fire out. Well, well no, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. said yeah. people We just removed yeah. the living kindling. Yeah. 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 Just, you know. All right, we'll see you. Kiss some hands and shake and baby. Fire.